Good morning, everyone. We welcome you to St. Francis of Assisi, the American National Catholic Church. This is the eighth Sunday in Ordinary Time. And to those of you who may be visiting us for the very first time, we extend a special welcome. We hope that you enjoy your time with us here today, and we hope that you'll come back and see us often. And our song of gathering this morning can be found on the inside cover of the music book. It's called All Are Welcome, All Belong. Please stand if you're able. All are welcome in this place. Behold love's amazing grace. All are welcome. All are welcome. Bring your hopes, bring your dreams. Mercy flows and love redeems. All are welcome. All belong. Welcome all the broken Together we sing and we proclaim All are welcome in this place Behold love's amazing grace All are welcome All are welcome Bring your hopes, bring your dreams Mercy flows and love redeems All are welcome All belong Welcome all who suffer violence, who long for safety and for peace. You are not alone, for you are God's own. Together we sing and we proclaim, all are welcome in this place. Behold love's amazing grace. All are welcome, all are welcome. Bring your hopes, bring your dreams. Mercy flows and love redeems. All are welcome, all belong. Welcome all who are forgotten, excluded and dignity denied. You are not. Together we sing and we proclaim All are welcome in this place Behold love's amazing grace All are welcome All are welcome Bring your hopes, bring your dreams Mercy flows and love redeems All are welcome All belong by making the sign that tells us something of the shape of our life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Good morning. Today we celebrate the eighth Sunday in Ordinary Time, and we offer our Mass today for peace in the Ukraine. Uh, we pray that uh, God might, uh, the Prince of Peace, might uh, bring peace to that very troubled area, and we might very earnestly, uh, as Christians, pray for uh, peace in that area. I want to take the opportunity to welcome our uh, music ministers back from a brief hiatus. Maureen and Pete are back with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, also joining us uh, today for Mass is Father Jonathan Tan, a uh, priest from California, the pastor of St. Seraphim in California, who is uh, incarnating with the American National Catholic Church. So if you get an opportunity, welcome when you leave. I also uh, want to welcome uh, to the body of Christ uh, those who will be baptizing today. So if they're here, can you hold them up a little bit, maybe like, uh, like the Lion King? I'm not, uh, uh, no, not yet. All right. All right. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll welcome them throughout the Mass. Uh, 
As we do always, we take a moment to call to mind our failings and our shortcomings. Aware that this God who loves us always brings us healing and forgiveness, and together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. And I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God, the Father, mercy through the death and resurrection of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the Church, may God grant you pardon and peace, and I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Together with the angels and the archangels, we raise our voices in that wonderful hymn of praise, the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. teacher and judge, hear our prayer as we gather at the table of your word. Enrich our hearts with the goodness of your wisdom and renew us from within, that all our actions and all our works may bear the fruit of your transforming grace. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the book of Syriac. When the sheave is shaken, the refuge appears. So does one's fault when one speaks. The kiln tests the potter's vessels. So the test of, a, of the just person is in tribulation. Its fruit, its fruit discloses the cultivation of a tree. So a person's speech discloses the cultivation of the mind. Do not praise someone before they speak, for this is the way people are tested. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to God. God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. It is 
is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name most high, to proclaim your kindness at dawn, and your faithfulness throughout the night. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. The just one shall flourish like the palm tree. Like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. They shall bear fruit even in old age. Vigorous and sturdy shall they be, declaring how just is the Lord my rock in whom there is no wrong. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when this <coughs> perishable body puts on imperishability and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia. Alleluia. in the world as you hold on to the word of life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully qualified will be like their teacher. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, friend, let me take out that speck in your eye? when you yourself do not see the log in your own eye. You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. 
Out of the good treasure of the heart, the good person produces good. And out of evil treasure, the evil person produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. My sisters and brothers, the good news of salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So uh, our gospel today uh, is the last part of what we call the Sermon on the Plain, where Jesus tells his disciples uh, these three mini parables. Right? So these short parables seem to be like proverbs, like when you hear what a proverb is, they are similar. These are uh, he teaching his disciples some nuggets of wisdom. The first parable teaches us the importance of competent leadership. There's a similar verse in Matthew chapter 15, uh, chapter 15, verse 14, where Jesus refers to the Pharisees as the one being the blind guides. I remember this Bible verse uh, very clearly, and also uh, it's been burned in my head because it was quoted to me by my English teacher in high school. <laughs> I was doing a presentation of which I was totally unprepared and did not meet my assigned, did not meet with any of my assigned team members. I was talking of, uh, to them about which of something I did not have any substantial knowledge. So my English teacher uh, Sue th uh, was able to see through me and he was very, she was very upset and ta it taught me a lesson. In our gospel, Jesus adds that training right, is important so that every disciple will be like his teacher. So that's why we as clergy in preparation for our, our ministry have to always uh, go back and learn so many things uh, so that uh, we will we, be competent speakers. Right? It is import, important for, for us to do our homework if we are to be good leaders. The second parable teaches us of that we, mind, we must be mindful and pay attention to our own faults and shortcomings before we criticize others. This is almost verbatim in Matthew chapter seven, uh, verse three to five. Those who are mindful of their own mistakes and weaknesses are less likely to pass judgment to others. Somehow, if we acknowledge our own faults, it makes us more sympathetic and more compassionate. At the beginning of mass, we always acknowledge how sinful we are before God and to one another in the confiteor I confess to Almighty God, right? And to you, my brothers and sisters. Perhaps we need to meditate on these words. And uh, once we do, we are less likely to simply say hurtful words to one another because we feel like it or we just want them to have a peace of our mind. Let us begin to look ourselves and uh, see what qualifies us to be the judge and jury of our fellow men. The third parable is close to our first reading from Sirach, and it teaches us about how we are to see through the character of someone by the words they say and the works they do. If we know someone lies so much so as to manipulate other people, then what does it say about the character of a person? At this time, it is sad to witness in our world what we live in right now, where some lies are being passed as truth. The internet, we call it the information highway, and all the other technology, TV, uh, radio, 
uh, we use to deploy information are sometimes being misused by malevolent forces. Uh, it is simply outrageous uh, to label the head of state of Ukraine as neo-Nazis. This lie used to invade a country, used to invade to break up families, fleeing of people from their homeland and the senseless death of so many. Those who believe this have clearly blinded themselves and swallowed their own conscience and convinced themselves that the lie is the truth. We are all children of the light. And if we choose to extinguish, to, if we personally choose to extinguish the light and choose to live in darkness, this darkness will consume our souls with guilt inch by inch. Today we will be celebrating the three baptisms. We welcome into baptism Hazel Rose Chiriazzo, Miles Richard Rosso, and Alistair Ethan Paras in the sacrament. And may the sacrament of baptism, which we will celebrate today, remind us of our own baptismal vows and recognize ourselves as children of the light. Let the light of Christ extinguish the darkness within ourselves and the whole world. The wisdom of God that Jesus imparts to us today is beyond the wisdom of the world. The wisdom of God opens our eyes that we are all citizens of the same city, the city of God, and we are all brothers and sisters. The wisdom of God opens our eyes to see in one another the perfect image of God of which we are made. Every time I witness the horror of what's happening in our world, I can't help but to feel very hopeless. But in reality, we are not hopeless. Our prayers can do so much, and there are many ways for us to support who are suffering. And I would like to end uh, this with a prayer from Bishop George's pastoral letter today. Most gracious Father, we ask that you give comfort, courage, and patience to the people of Ukraine as they endure the unjust aggression leveled against them. We ask that you open the hearts of the Russian leaders that they may repent in their imperial ambitions. We ask that you strengthen our own resolve to love, profit, profligately and work mightily for peace, that your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who came to bring peace to the world, may find us worthy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As a people dedicated to the Prince of Peace, let us stand and profess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through God all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he arose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathering our prayer as God's people, we now offer them in faith. Our refrain for today will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our 
our sisters and brothers in Ukraine as they fight for their country, for their independence, and for their lives. May God protect them in their struggle, sending them both strength and comfort in their hour of need. May God send healing and peace to that war-torn region and help bring an end to the conflict. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that their hearts may become a home for the word of God. May they seek peaceful coexistence with their global neighbors and exercise common sense and restraint in the way in which they engage with other nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of our planet and the environment, that we will not allow ignorance, greed, and short-sighted interests to destroy or irreparably damage our climate, our water, or the beauties of nature that can never be replaced. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the American National Catholic Church and all world religions, that our hearts will be filled with love, integrity, faith, and hope in the living God. May we all sing forever of his love and work together for justice and salvation in the world. This month, we especially pray for our own St. Francis of Assisi, American National Catholic Church, the, the Cathedral Church of ANCC, here in Glenwood, New Jersey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our young people, as they look forward to the milestones in their lives, whether it be a sacrament, graduation, engagement, or marriage. May they let the Lord guide them in their choices, and may we as a community support them in their challenges along life's journey. We especially pray for those being baptized this weekend, Hazel Rose, Miles Richard, and Alistair Ethan. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As disciples of Christ, we must learn to recognize and respond to his presence in our lives. May we not grumble and complain and question if God is with us, but always have faith that the Lord is by our side, so that we will not be shaken, but we will be, but we'll have gladness in our hearts and hope in our souls. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as we prepare for Lent, we may turn away from the many matters of our busy lives and take the time to focus on the love of God that has been poured into our hearts. May we embrace the Holy Spirit that dwells within us, for it is the Spirit that turns us toward the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing for the sick, those suffering from addiction and depression, those in hospitals, nursing homes, and rehabilitation, and hospice, that they may receive the spiritual and emotional support they need, and for the strength and patience of their for, for their for, uh, caregivers. Are there any one we should especially recognize? Marie, Kathleen, Cecilia, Eddie. Mark, Rosa. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those who have died, that God who gives us the promise of eternal life will grant them fullness of salvation and provide comfort to their families. And are there any whom we should especially remember today? We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join me in a prayer of thanksgiving for our newest deacon who was ordained yesterday at Our Lady of Guadalupe, uh, uh, Roger Hernandez, and for the faith community of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal in Maryland and for uh, the gift that Father Jonathan brings to us in the American National Catholic Church. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And as always, we pray for those who have no one to pray for them. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Gathering our prayers together, let's sing uh, that uh, song that invites peace in our hearts. Peace, peace is flowing like a river, flowing down for you and me. Flowing down into the desert, setting all the captives free. Please turn to song number 613 in the music book for Seek Ye First, number 613. Seek 
ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Thank you. And all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, you provide us with gifts to be offered to your name, and you accept them as a sign of our loving service. In your mercy, grant that the offering you enable us to make may obtain for us an enduring reward. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I just want to invite, if the children are comfortable, to come and join me around the altar as we might uh, see in them uh, a reflection of the children in Ukraine and pray for them uh, as well as our children joining us. So if you're comfortable and you'd like to join us, I think that would be wonderful. <coughs> you don't have to force anybody. <laughs> <laughs> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. We know that your boundless glory is shown in this, that you, the Most High God, came to rescue our mortal nature. In our very weakness you found a remedy. The nature which led to our downfall became the means of our salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adore you and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices join with theirs in their triumphant chorus of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest hosanna in the In our preparation for the season of Lent and for the people of Ukraine, we'll pray the canon for reconciliation. From the beginning, O oh God, all you have done for the human family, you have done for our good, that we may be holy as you yourself are holy. 
Look with kindness then on your people gathered before you. Send your spirit in power that these gifts may become for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, in whom we have become your sons and daughters, your children. When we were lost and our hearts were far from you, you showed the depth of your love. Your Son, who alone is the just one, gave himself into our hands and was nailed to the wood of the cross. Before he stretched out his arms between heaven and earth in the everlasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover in the company of his disciples and those he loved. While they were at table, he took bread. He gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to all of those whom he loved, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. At the end of the meal, knowing he would reconcile all things to himself by the blood of the cross, he took the cup filled with wine. Again he gave you thanks and praise, and handing the cup to all of those whom he loved, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We remember Jesus Christ, our Passover, and our lasting peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection. We await the blessed day of his return, and we present to you, God, ever faithful and true, the offering that restores the world to your grace. We remember Jesus, our merciful Father. <clears throat> Look with love on those you, have, you draw to yourself. Through their sharing in the sacrifice of Christ, by the power of your spirit, may they become the body of your risen Son, in whom all divisions are healed. Keep us in communion of mind and heart, together with the patriarchs of Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople, Jerusalem, and Rome, George, our bishop. Help us to work for the coming of your kingdom until at last we stand in your presence and take our place among the saints with the Virgin Mary and the apostles and with our departed brothers and sisters whom we commend to your mercy. Then in the glory of your new creation, freed from the sting of death, we shall sing to you the hymn of thanksgiving which rises from Christ the risen Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us share with, with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. My sisters and brothers, this is Jesus, our Lamb of God. This is Jesus who invites each and every one of us into the experience of God's love, and how happy are we to be called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. For those of you who are joining us for Mass on the various television platforms, we invite you to join us in this prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And a reminder that in the American National Catholic Church, everyone is invited to come up and receive communion. This is your uh, first time at St. Francis. Uh, we uh, come up to communion one side at a time. So this side will come up first and then that side. So pray we get a bigger space. <laughs> um, Please turn to song number 600, Be Not Afraid, number 600. You shall cross the barren desert but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You 
shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go You shall not drown Let's put it back over there. if you walk amid the burning flames. You shall not be hard if you stand before the power of hell and death is at your side. No. If wicked tongues and soul can hate you all because of me, blessed, blessed are you. Be not afraid. I go. at your banquet of salvation through the sacrament which nourishes our lives on earth make us sharers in eternal life we ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen. Amen. please be seated for our announcements Ash Wednesday is coming up on March 2nd and our mass for Ash Wednesday is at 8 a.m. and at 7 p.m. so please join us and join us for the American National Catholic Church Retreat coming up on March 12th, 13th, 19th, and 20th. The theme of the retreat is Who Am I Before God? 
on March 12th from 6 to 8 p.m., on the 13th from 4 to 6 p.m., on the 19th between 7 and 8 p.m., and on the 20th between 4 and 6 p.m. You may participate in person or on Zoom. Registration is required, as well as a small donation of $10. You may register using the provided registration link in our electronic bulletin, or you can scan the QR code from the poster at the chapel entrance. On Fridays during Lent, we will be having Holy Hour or Stations of the Cross, followed by a weekly reflection. The weekly reflection spiritual exercise is entitled, My Desert. You may join us in person at St. Francis or on Zoom. Join us in our spiritual journey through the season of Lent by reflecting on the gospel for the day. You may read the daily reflections by visiting lentonretreat.wordpress.com. Father Joseph Harmon and Mr. Mark Troutman will offer a six-week Lenten study of Messiah and the Bible. The study will take place on Sunday evenings from 7 to 8.15 on Zoom beginning on February 27th, which of course is today. It will follow the same format as the Advent study with commentary on the biblical passages and their meaning for us as we journey through Lent to Easter. To register, please go to the ANCTI website, ANCTI.org, where you will find more information and the button for the registration form. You only need to register once each Saturday afternoon, you will receive the Zoom link for the Sunday session. Please continue your support to the Pierre Toussaint Food Pantry, and the next religious education for the children will be coming up on March 13th at 10 a.m. And finally, Maureen and I would like to thank all of you for your very warm welcome back. We are very happy to be back uh, as part of the musical rotation here at St. Francis, and we want to say thank you to all of the wonderful musicians who sat in for us during hi hiatus. And Dennis, may I say, my friend, you totally rocked it. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> nice to be back. This is Quinn, and I just want everyone to say hello to her. But also, I want uh, Nate to come over here. Nate, come on over for a second. Uh, Nate, uh, because of the pandemic, many of us have not been here for a while, but I have to tell you, Nate did a terrific job serving today, right? He looked like he was practicing at home, right? Was he? Not so much, right? Uh, this is his little brother who I think also wanted to come up as well, right? Um, I really want to encourage you, all the activities that we have for Lent, might uh, lead you to think that we're a very simple parish. We're not, right? We are, but we want to move as the body of Christ closer in our relationship to God. And so I hope that you can join us for some of these activities. And actually, we're very honored and privileged. I think uh, 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 Dr. Pesimari is in the back. Uh, would you stand up for a minute? Sorry. Uh, uh, come here. It's a recorder. He will be. Uh, uh, he will be leading uh, much of our, uh, our uh, Lenten retreat and activities along with various clergy of the ANCC. So I just want to uh, have you have a little familiarity uh, with him. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so when you see him, you won't, uh, you won't, uh, you won't miss him, right? Um, also, there is a group of us who meet on Wednesday nights uh, at 7 uh, during Lent. So uh, we will continue that as well. So please, if you can, right? Um, uh, Father Judy's homily was beautiful, and uh, it is moving that we are in 2022 having to pray for peace with such earnestness. But we really do have to pray for peace. Uh, this is a horrible, uh, horrible. I get uh, uh, some communications from different uh, religious orders who have stayed in the Ukraine, uh, many women religious who are not leaving, and, uh, and we just need to hold them in prayer. Right, and, uh, and I'm understanding that even grandmothers now are defending uh, apartments. So, so we pray that God might see, uh, help cease this, uh, this awful tension, right? So, um, so welcome to Quinn. She looks very interested in you. <laughs> I apologize, I don't have much of a voice. I uh, got a new puppy, and I forgot uh, how much work they are. And uh, it usually wakes me up at 4.30 in the morning, so I'm glad I stayed awake. <laughs> Maria, I pocket dialed Maria the other day, uh, right after I, right, right as I was yelling at uh, Finnegan for having a <laughs> And please uh, join me in welcoming Father uh, Father Tan, if you would. If you stand, I'll give you the blessing. The Lord be with you. Also with you. 
Bow your heads for God's blessing. May God, the source of every good gift, who calls us to eternal glory in Christ Jesus, confirm, strengthen, and, and support you in the faith. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. As we go out this morning, we will be singing number 530, the Celtic <laughs> Alleluia. And this is the last time that we will be singing the Alleluia until Easter Sunday. So let's all sing out as we send it on its way. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Now with the strength of your word, send us to be your disciples, to bring all the world to the joy of the wine of compassion, send us out to serve all the world in your name. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope of Christ's coming, and by unity let your love fill our lives.